first I want to hear the reasons why Crouchy wanted me on, to be honest. When you played your your 400th game for West Ham, I just felt this day and age, you just don't get that anymore. You know what I mean? So like a one club man, someone who's been up, down with one club, people talk about Steven Gerrard or Jamie Carragher, people like that, but maybe Mark Noble doesn't get the credit maybe that he deserves. Yeah, do you know what? When I, when, I, when, I look, when I actually think about it and think doing it for the club you support, you know what I mean? Doing it for the team that you, I used to sneak in at Upton Park and climb under the fence when, when I, when I did, couldn't afford tickets and then to go on and play 400 um, Premier League games for the, for the club you support is, is, is pretty special. And as you say, there's only a handful of um, players that's, that's gone on to do that. So It's a hell of a journey. I'm so excited for us to get into it. How do you sum up being captain of a team that you love so much, like for, for mere mortals like me? So my, my upbringing was... A West Ham kit for your birthday, a West Ham kit for Christmas. Like, if you're lucky, you got the away kit, and if you're really lucky, you got your number, you, you name a number on the back. Like, full stop. Do you know what I mean? With my own, with my mates, I used to go to the games and try to sneak in, and then sometimes used to get tickets, and and then yeah, like, mad. Just it's so mad, mate. Honestly, I know it's you, you become accustomed to it because you're in it now for so long. But yeah, like you got to imagine my my, my debut. My mom and dad was away. They was they was in, they was in Cyprus. Like my dad's watched me play all around the world. Like he sat on trains to Sweden, Lulio, and overnight trains. Had nothing. He had a, I think he had twenty quid in his pocket at the time. I was playing under seventeen or something. And he's watched me everywhere. And then he, he goes away on holiday. My mom and my sisters, and then Pars calls me into the first team and says like you're on the bench tonight, and and then brings me on for twenty minutes. And Carly's my wife now. Like she, we, we went to school together, and she um. She was at the game, and like I was obviously, you got to understand, mate. I was like, I was in school six months ago with all my mates, like talking about West Ham and like going to the games on the weekend and being called into the first team and playing, and and the boys all being there. And then I went, I see Carly after, and I was like, I didn't even pass my test then. I think I failed my first test. I had a, I had a golf sitting outside my house, and used to go and see it and just play the music and turn the lights <laughs> on. <laughs> and that's then, what I did. Yeah, and then and then. We, we, me and Carly walked home together, mate. Let's just like I said, uh, like the traffic's murder outside, up, outside the Bowling. Yeah, walked home, mate. Walked across, mm. like walked past Brampton, across the bridge, and went home. And then to become captain and and, and do do what I've done with the club is is mm. it's just like honestly, you can't you can't even think of it. that sort of thing used to happen all the time twenty forty years ago. A local lad who supports the club plays for them and captains them, but it's such a rare thing now. That it feels somehow more special. Yeah, and do you know what? A lot of people ask me now, like, because I'm coming to the end of my career, say, oh, what's your proudest moment or what's your biggest achievement and all that? Because obviously, I've played a lot of games for the club. I've, I've, I've won nothing really. You know what I mean? Like, I've, a couple of playoff finals or whatever, even though they're really important. But as in, like, proper trophies, I haven't. But I've had, like, nine managers of different nationalities, different ways of playing, and, uh, and always been picked. Do you know what I mean? Because you don't. You don't get picked in a Premier League team because you support the club and you're a homegrown player, full stop. Like, if you're not good enough, you get moved on. Like That's the way football is now. So, yeah, for me, definitely, that is that is my That's such a good point, achievement. man. Like, I'm thinking of this right now. As a football fan, if I had the ability and skills that you boys have, would I rather play for a lot of different teams and perhaps win an FA Cup or a Champions League, which I guess is what, you know, every footballer aspires to or would I rather become like would I rather be a Watford fan who's gone and done everything and been and will always be sort of remembered for being this Watford player and the word legend or or uh, it's a really interesting not mm. that you should really have to choose but it's an interesting balance isn't it because I think out of those two scenarios I would rather be the player that perhaps went to Watford and did my bit there and, and played through. This is my this is my point at the moment with with Harry Kane. You know, like that and the, and the chat that you know he might move on and it's like it, yeah, but if he does win something with Tottenham and yeah, he's such a great player and he could go anywhere he wants to go. But if he does stay and he does win something with Tottenham, or it just it just means more, doesn't it? it it's going to mean more to him than going to Man City or Man United and. You know, let's be honest, Nobles is going to be at West Ham all his life. You know, he's got a job. If he wants a job at West Ham, he's got it there forever. You know, if you'd have left and gone to, say, Tottenham, for instance, five years ago, you might all have won. walked down the street. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. You know, it tarnishes your 
your West Ham career. There is a side to it where to play the games I have and to go through last ever captain at bowling, having the last ever testimonial at the stadium and then moving into the Olympic Stadium as captain and, and going through all this, um, it just creates a bit of history for myself and my family, do you know what I mean, in years to come. Like, Absolutely. Um, and it's, it, it's mm. so special that I've been lucky enough to do that. Do you think that's held you back with England? Um, I don't know, mate. Maybe, you know, like, because there's a lot of players that um, have gone and, and moved to clubs and done well for six months, got an England call up. I don't know whether it's just like, oh, Mark Noble, he plays West Ham every week. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like seven, yeah. seven out of 10 or whatever, eight out of 10. And it, it's, it's, it's something I don't really regret. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't really think, oh, do you know what? I've really, because everyone always, unless you're, if you're not ever happy with what you've got, like you'd never be happy as a person. Totally. You know what I mean? Totally. Like, mm-hmm. I've and then you'll stop for... yourself doing other things as well. It's a slightly weird situation, isn't it, that you had at West Ham, where you have a manager and then he leaves and then he comes back. So just being honest, when David Moyes gets reappointed, how are you feeling? Oh, mate, I've gotten so well with him the first time. So, like, we had a great relationship. And, um, and, then, he, and then I got a phone call saying the gaffer might be coming back. And did I think it was a good idea? And I said yes, because I thought he was really good the first time. I was don't get me wrong. I was it was I was quite sad to see Manuel go. So I got on really well with him. We we had some good times together, but we just got on a bad run late, and and, and I think the, the chairman decided to make a decision. And then uh, the gaffer rang me as in Moisey, and I met him at the stadium the, the day he got appointed, and he asked me about the players. He knew a lot of them anyway, and I think a lot of the players were pleased to work with him again. And yeah, the rest is history. He's done a fantastic job. What what's special about him that brings out the best in you? The one thing when he first came that I was so impressed by it, he had an unbelievable way of like digging you out. Say it was half time and he wasn't quite having the best game or he wanted something else from you. Whether it was me, Anatovic, Lanzini, it didn't, care, it didn't matter who it was. Like he had an unbelievable way of digging you out without actually digging you out. Do you know what I mean? Like it, <laughs> it, was, it was like he'd shout and at you and give you instructions. But the lads like really took to it, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? It, uh, it was like a really, it was a good skill. Uh, I mean, since he come back, he's got, he's even in the two years he was away, he, he's chilled a little bit. He's, he's, he's not like he was before. Not as much. He still does it, of course. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, he had, a, he had a really good way of doing that. It was, it was, it's quite a skill. Who's yeah, Moise's yeah, favourite? Ah, uh, Jesse Lingard at the minute, mate. No, I bet he is. Yeah, <laughs> I bet he is. Like he's not like we do boxes crouchy. He's not even a lad in the middle, mate. You know, like the gaffer was standing there the other day, and now obviously the lads are on it. Do you know what I mean? So it's a running joke, and they live in the same apartment block now as well. <laughs> oh, very yeah. cozy. But the gaffer loves it as well. Like he'd be around Jess, he'd be with all us, and he'd go, Jess, yeah, thanks for bringing me that bottle of wine the other night. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and he'd just like swallow his Adam's apple, Jesse. <laughs> 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 he just wouldn't have a comeback. You know what I mean? But yeah, he's uh. He loves Jesse, mate. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts.